Good morning, Mount Olivet. I want to thank you for attending our church today. On the third Sunday in this month, it is just a blessing to see everybody. I want everybody just to smile. You're on candid camera. Smile this morning. If you would turn with me to 1 John, the first chapter. And we will start at verse 6. 1 John, first chapter, starting at verse 6. Amen. And it reads, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light and we fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and gift and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I read 1 John, first chapter, verses 6 through 10. Let the Lord add a blessing to all his words that we have received today and will receive today. Amen.
beyond a shadow of a doubt, none of us can go one step further without the Lord in our lives. It's been the Lord from last Sunday to this Sunday who's carried each and every one of us along our way. And as we prepare to go before God's throne of grace and mercy, we simply ask, Lord, give me you in the midst of every situation. Give me you in the midst of every circumstance. Lord, give me you in the midst of all of my issues, Lord, give me you. You know, when you cast your cares upon the Lord, he cares for us. And that when life burns down so heavy, we know it's him who upholds us with his strong right hand. So we want to go in prayer for those right now who are on our prayer list. We want to lift up Lady Yolanda Franklin. One little Bishop James Burr, Lady Emma Burr. One little lift up minister where who's away right now caring for her grandmother Sadie. One lift up so many others right now, pastors and preachers and houses of worship all around this world. One lift up Sister Phyllis Hurd, Deacon Troy Burr. One lift up all of our mothers, Mother Geraldine. Reynolds and Mother Lula Rachel, and Mother Barbara Treller. We want to lift up Sister Bianca McCoy and Sister Johnny Staples, Brother Douglas Rachel and Sister Michelle White, Brother Tony and Sister Myra Green. We want to lift up those who are going through the valley of sorrow because a loved one's been called home. We want to lift up the Stikes family. God called my, my aunt to eternal rest last week, and that's my father's sister, so we lift up them right now. Lift up my cousin Robert Stikes and my cousin Renee Stikes. We lift up Brother Les Thomas and Brother Charles Rachel, Brother Aaron Jones and Brother Andre Giddens, 
Brother Chester and babies, children, youth, and young adults all around this world. We want to lift those who are suffering from mental illness, and those who are the homeless and the hungry, those impacted by natural disasters and man-made crisis. Let us lift up the war-torn countries. If there's a situation that God has put on your heart or placed in your mind, lift it to the Lord right now that he might supersede and oversee all those situations. For we know that he is the one true living God. So I invite you to pray with me right now, however your prayer posture is. In the song, she says, you know, those we're on our knees. And most of us, amen, the truth be told, a little longer in the game to get on our knees. Amen, somebody. But symbolically, we are on our knees before the Lord. So whether your prayer posture is sitting, kneeling, standing, or laying flat in the floor, I invite you right now, those watching in the cyber sanctuary, to let us go before God's mighty throne that we might lay all of our prayer petitions before him. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for being the one true living God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness, our redeemer, our savior, our Lord, our soon returning king. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that reminds us of all that Jesus said and all that Jesus did and all that you call each and every one of us to be. Lord, we come to you right now for there is no other help we can call upon. Father, right now we bring all of our troubles, all of our trials, all of our tribulations before you right now. Lord, asking you if it be in your holy will to turn situations around right now. Lord, right now we ask that you continue to comfort those going through the valley of sorrow right now. For you said in your words, you are the God of all comfort. Comfort them, strengthen them, and give them the peace of mind right now, Father God. To let them know you are God ever too wise to make a mistake. But more importantly, a God that's too loving to ever do wrong. Father, be with all of our children right now as they prepare to go back to school on tomorrow. Keep your holy hedge around them, dear God, from preschool all the way to college, Heavenly Father, that no hurt, harm, or danger might befall them. Father, put people in their pathway, Lord, that, that will lift them up, Heavenly Father, not pull them down. That the decisions they make, Heavenly Father, Lord, will glorify you and lift you high. And Father God, we ask right now that you bless all of our medical work and all of our hospital personnel, all of our caregivers, and everyone with a child with special needs. Lord, we ask right now that you bless all of our elected officials, all of our first responders. Father God, we ask right now that you just bless each and every one of us who is going through the daily woes of life and the fiery trials of our faith. Bless houses of worship all around this world, dear God, that a word might go forth, a deed might be done that will help us just to run on a little while longer that we might know that you are God. Father, we ask right now that you just continue, Lord, to do that which only you can do. Lord, that you rest heavy in this place called Mount Olivet, from the choir stand to the pulpit to the last pew, dear God. Lord, that you just go forth, Heavenly Father, Lord, encouraging your people through your spirit right now, that we might just run on or declare from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, look what our God has done. Father God, we pray right now, Lord, that you just make this fertile ground for your word, Heavenly Father, that it might be deposited in our spirit, dear God, that we might know what a mighty God you are. Father, have your way right now in all that we do and all that we say that a dying world might come to know a living Savior. And Father, whatever I forgot to mention, please don't forget to grant if it be in that holy and divine will. Have your way right now, Lord, because only you, Heavenly Father, only you are the one that can change things, who can change hearts, who can change minds, who can transform people. Lord, right now, only you so Lord, we come right now and bring all of our prayer petitions before you. Have your way right now, O oh Lord. In your house is in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our soon returning King, Jesus the Christ. We do pray and ask all. Amen.
Savior one more time here at Mount Olivet. Amen. As we go throughout our service, we're going to uh, put up our QR code, ask that you just scan it, amen, that we might connect with you and, and tell you how much we love you and just thank you for being a part of our worship this morning. Or you can text 678-540-1910 to and connect with us. Amen. So as we go throughout our service, amen, we want you to feel welcome, we want you to clap your hands, we want you to tap your toes, we want you to lift your voices as we celebrate the goodness of our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just good to see so many of you here. Amen. Your beautiful faces, your smiling faces, and those who are worshiping with us in our cyber sanctuary. If you have any first-time visitors, can you just raise your hand, any first-time visitors? Amen. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor worshiping with us in our cyber sanctuary, type in the comment section or in the chat. I'm a first-time visitor, so we can just welcome you and love on you. Amen. To let you know how much we appreciate you tuning in to Mount Olivet and making Mount Olivet your place of worship on this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Just have a couple of announcements I want to read until you're hearing. Amen. Again, as always, we'd like to congratulate each and everyone who's celebrating a birthday in the month of April. Anyone have a birthday this week? Anyone have a birthday this week? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Happy birthday to you. Amen. There's nothing like turning 21 again. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Be mindful that on this afternoon at 3 o'clock, the Friendship Congress of Christian Education, amen, from the Friendship Missionary Baptist Association will be held at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Powder Springs, amen. I'm going to be going over there and invite each and every one who can to journey over there with me that we may take a part of this valuable uh, section of our association, amen. And then, I'm really excited about this piece, amen. Every Tuesday evening at 6.30, we have community Bible study here at Mount Olivet. If you've been to community Bible study, can you just say, woo, woo, anybody? Amen. We have a good time at community Bible study, learning the word of God, diving into the word of God, and sharing insight with one another. And so do yourself a favor. Join us each Tuesday night at 630 for community Bible study. And don't keep it to yourself. Don't be stingy. Invite somebody else to come and learn the word of God with you. Amen. Uh, this, this Tuesday's facilitator is going to be Minister Daryl Ward. Amen. We're still in the section of Satan's secret strategies. Amen. We had such a good time last time, man. We couldn't finish it all. So we're going to pick up on part two of it on this Tuesday. Amen. And then on, on May the 11th uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, the men of Mount Olivet are going to host a Women's or Mother's Day breakfast for the women of Mount Olivet. Amen. You'll get more information. Amen. Amen. You'll get a little more details on that in the future, but we want to kind of put you on notice so you can put that in your spiritual Rolodex. Amen. On May the 11th, on that Saturday, 
Amen. The men of Mount Olivet would like to serve the mothers and the women of Mount Olivet on bread and breakfast. Amen. 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 We don't cook that bad, Brother Greg. Amen. Amen. And then later on that afternoon, uh, the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha and the men of Alpha Phi Alpha will host a blood drive at Wellstar Paulding Hospital from 9 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. So that means after you come over and have a good breakfast that morning, amen, you go over and give some blood that afternoon, amen. And it's to help to close the gap on sickle cell anemia, amen, which really targets black and brown people, amen. So all that's going on on May the 11th. And then voting 2024. This is a crucial year for the voting process. Here in Paulding County, we know that on May 21st, we have a local election. Amen. We're going to vote in a new sheriff. We're going to vote in some new commissioners. Amen. So a well-informed voter is a powerful voter. So I need you to dive into the issues so you can decide who you're going to vote for. We always say here at Mount Olivet, we never tell you who to, go, who to vote for. But we always encourage you, please, sir, please, ma'am, go vote. Amen. Amen. And then we know that on May, on May the uh, 19th, Amen. We're going to celebrate our 158th church anniversary. Amen. We're having two services. Amen. You get more information on that, but go ahead and put that on your calendar right now. We're going to have a, a two services on that Sunday that God might just be praised for what he's done for us here at Mount Olivet throughout the years. Amen. Amen. Deacons, if you all would come up, amen, and prepare us for a gathering of our uh, offerings, amen, that we can give back to God what he's already given to us. Amen. As always, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for the way you bless us spiritually and the way you bless us financially. Without a doubt, if it's not for your support, we could not go on without your prayers. And we could not be a blessing to others without your generous giving. So we thank each and every one of you for the way you bless us. There are four ways to give here at Mount Olivet. You can give each and every Sunday during our morning service. You can give online through tablet or through our church website. Or you can give through the U.S. Mail at 3228 Highway 101 North, Rockmark, Georgia, 30153, here at Mount Olivet. I'm going to ask if all who, who can, just please stand, amen. Just please stand and face those pretty stained glass windows. Our usher is going to come and direct you down to give back to God, to return back to God we've already given you. Amen. Well, oh.
speaker for the day, amen. He's not a stranger to most of us, amen. And after you hear him speak, he won't be a stranger to you, amen. He's a powerful speaker in the name of the Lord. Amen. He's one who will preach, one who can preach, and one who loves to preach. Am I right about it, somebody? He's known throughout all of Georgia, across the southeast, and I dare say even across all of America, amen, for being a preacher, amen, who loves the word of God. But now his reputation is growing even faster as the oh oh preacher. Oh oh, oh oh preacher. Y'all you know what I mean? Show, show us this, uh, this slide real quick, Brother Junior. Here he comes. All right, family. It's been a long time since we've done this right here. Y'all know what's about to happen. Preachers have fun too. So we're about to get some self care oh, on yeah. here on Goliath and Six Flags over Georgia. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> Amen. After the choir blesses us, amen, if they set the atmosphere, the next voice you will hear be that old, the oh yeah preacher, Reverend Joseph Troy Howard Sr. Let's put our hands together and receive him. Come on, choir. Set the atmosphere. Oh yeah.
our Father and our God, we come to you right now. Right now, Lord. And we bless your holy name. Yes, yes. For you have truly done great things. Yes. And for that, God, we thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough. Because yes. there is so much that you have done for us. There's so much that you're doing right now. And God, we even believe by faith that there is so much that you have yet to do. God, we thank you for this privilege to lift you up. This privilege to come to your house of worship one more time. To give you some true and humble praise. We thank you, oh God, for every song that's been sung, every prayer that's been prayed, every scripture that's been read. We pray, oh God, that it has been pleasing in your sight. But now, God, we need a word from you. We need to hear what you have to say to your children in these last and evil days. And we're grateful, oh God, that no matter what goes on in our world, no matter what is taking place in our lives, you always have something to say to your children. And so, Father, as we come to these moments of preaching, we humbly ask that you speak now for your servants are listening. And God, as always, please move me out of self. Let this message be all about you and you alone. Please open the hearts of your people here and those watching and listening online that they may receive this message and somehow be blessed by it and be able to apply it to their lives. And now as David prayed in the 19th Psalm, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Let the people of God say amen again. Can we put our hands together this morning and give our God some praise. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Good morning, Mount Olivet. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It is a blessing to be home. It is a blessing to see each and every one of your beautiful faces here gathered in this house of worship. And we just thank God for another day's journey. Before I go any further, I want to thank God for a great friend, a great mentor, and the phenomenal pastor of this congregation. Mount Olivet, you are blessed to have the Reverend Cord Franklin Sr. as your pastor. Can we give God some praise for him? I'm going to get to that in a minute because I know you was behind that. But thank you, sir, for the invitation to come and preach the gospel. Amen. I thought I was just coming to preach. I ain't know that all my business was going to be up there on the screen. But then again, when you put it on Facebook, you know, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. But God bless you. Thank you so much for this invitation. It is a blessing and a privilege to be here to the deacons and the officers of this great church, to Deaconess Dobbs. God bless you. To these phenomenal musicians and this excellent choir. Can we give it up for them? Amen. God bless you. I didn't get the purple memo. I guess the spirit be going because I'm wearing purple too and I ain't even know. So look at that. Look at God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? To the ushers at the door, God bless you. To the Hannon brothers in the back, Hannon the tech. And, and y'all were in on that video business too, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all had a little something to do with it. You could have told me. I walked right in the door. I gave y'all a hug. Y'all ain't said a mumbling word. But I appreciate that. I mean, hey, preachers have fun too. Yeah, and you need self-care. So if, if even in the lab, get a lesson from that. Prioritize self-care. Take care of yourself. Do something that's enjoyable, that brings you life, that's legal. Hello, somebody. But something that gives you life. We got to... No, they, they, they have put it back on the screen, Lord. And we just thank God for each and every one of you. I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge the presence of my wife and a powerful preacher in her own right, the Reverend Bianca Howard. Love you very much, sweetheart. God bless you. 
to our two beautiful children, who I'm sure you all have heard at this point. Miss Rose Victoria, Daddy Loves You Very Much, and Mr. Joseph Jr., Mr. Joseph Troy Howard Jr. God bless the both of you. Daddy loves y'all very much. And speaking of Daddy, I'm grateful for the presence of my father, Mr. Joe Howard. Dad, I love you so much. I'm grateful to have you here today. And as always, in her heavenly absence, we acknowledge my mother, Mrs. Joyce Howard. Mama, I love you. I know you are around God's throne, enjoying an amazing Holy Ghost party. But you are missed down here. Uh, but we just thank God for all of you and all of those watching and listening online. Thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast. All of those who are able, if you would please stand to your feet out of reverence and respect for the reading of God's word. That song that the choir just sang is confirmation because we will be coming from the scripture from which that song was produced. It's almost as if Brother Greg knew what I was going to preach. Amen. <laughs> I invite you to the Old Testament, Psalms 103. Psalms 103. And for the purpose of this message, we will engage verses 1 through 11, and then we will skip down to verse 17. Once again, the Old Testament book of Psalms, the largest book in the Bible, the 103rd number, beginning at verse 1, reading to verse 11, and then concluding with verse 17. Amen. Good to see my brother Jalen over there. I understand that he's driving now. Amen, amen. And I see his dad shaking his head. Amen. Praying for both of y'all. Mind the rules of the road, sir. Look both ways. Amen. Seat belt, drive safely. All that good stuff. I will be reading from the New King James translation. Psalms 103, beginning at verse 1, God's word declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. And then if you skip down to verse 17, you find these words, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> for a few moments this morning, I'd like to talk to you about perpetual blessings. Perpetual blessings. One of my favorite television shows is ABC's Shark Tank. 
On the show, entrepreneurs come and pitch their businesses to a panel of sharks in hopes of receiving a financial investment. In return, the entrepreneurs offer a percentage of their business's sales going forward as payment for both the investment as well as the expertise of the sharks. While some deals are structured for the sharks to receive a particular percentage until they've recouped their investment, there's another type of deal known as perpetuity. Let the church say perpetuity. Perpetuity. There you go, meaning that the investor will receive a percentage of the sales for as long as the business is in operation. For example, if a company pays you a royalty in perpetuity on a particular product, then that means you will receive a cut of every single unit sold for however long that product is for sale. In short, y'all, as long as the product sells, you will continue to make money. That word perpetuity is derived from the word perpetual or perpetuate. This means that something is continual or never ending. It's a situation in which something flows in an uninterrupted manner and it never comes to an end. For example, a husband or a wife ought to have perpetual love for their spouse. A parent ought to have perpetual love for their child. As believers, we ought to have perpetual trust in God. And in a likewise manner, God wants us to remember that his love for you and I is perpetual. His grace is perpetual. His mercy is perpetual. His favor is perpetual. And as a consequence of this, we are the beneficiaries of God's perpetual blessings. We are the recipients. We are the inheritors. And as long as God remains in the blessing business, we will continue to be blessed by our God. Amen. Our text today comes to us from the largest book in the entire Bible, that being the book of of Psalms. Psalms 103 is one of the many Psalms of David. Most of us were first introduced to David through the story of his triumph over the giant Goliath. Many of us are familiar with the moniker given to David in 1 Samuel 13 as a man after God's own heart. David had a long and storied history with God. And in essence, David and God were no strangers at all, which we see expressed through David's wording in the text. A psalm is a sacred song or hymn written solely for the purpose of worshiping God. When we arrive at Psalms 103, David gives one big exhortation, which is another word for a strong urging or encouragement of somebody to do something. When somebody gets up here and says, come on, give God a hand, clap of praise, that's exhortation. They're trying to get you to clap your hands. They're trying to get you to lift your hands. They're trying to get you in a mood of worship. That is exhortation. So in this case, David is exhorting or encouraging his audience to bless the Lord, to praise the Lord, to lift him up. David is essentially saying that God is worthy of the highest praise that each and every one of us has to offer. And, and that's why he says in verse 1, all that's within me, praise his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. In other words, all of my strength, all of my energy, all of my abilities, everything that I have to offer, I'm going to put into my praise. Yeah. Like Jesus commands in Matthew 22 and 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. And just as we put effort into everything else, God expects a conscientious and intentional praise. God wants us to put effort into our worship, effort into our praise, effort into our time with him. David then says in verse 2 of Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. 
David then goes on to list some of those benefits in verses 3 through 6. God who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Family, these are some good benefits. These are some wonderful things to have at our disposal. And yet that's just a taste of what God is able to do for us. This barely scratches the surface of what our God can do. The possibilities are endless with God. God does not have a highest point. God does not have a best that he can do. God's abilities are immeasurable. There is no limit to what God can do do. So never think that what God did in your life before was somehow God's best because baby you ain't seen nothing yet. Just when you think you've seen all that God has, he has more up his sleeve. Why? Because when God is in it, there is truly no limits. But as we continue this conversation about benefits, let the church say benefits. Let me remind us that God decides, I need to listen to this part right here, God decides when and how these benefits are given. Did y'all hear that? God decides when and how these benefits are given. We don't get to choose when our benefits show up. We don't get to choose how our benefits show up. God is not some vending machine where we make our selection and it falls to our laps just like that. No, God has a reason and a method behind every benefit that he provides. One thing about God, I've said this a million times, nothing about our God is random or by chance. God doesn't just so happen to give benefits to certain people. God doesn't say, okay, you can have this, you can have this, just whatever, whatever, whatever. No, God is intentional. God is intentional, meaning he gives each person what he wants them to have. And he gives it to them when he wants them to have it. I point this out because many of us, myself included, have a tendency to compare benefits. Huh? We have a tendency to compare benefits. We compare our blessings with the blessings of other people. They have the husband or the wife that I want. They have the house or the car that I want. They have the money that I want. They have the career that I want. They have, they have, they have, they have. And God is saying what they have ain't got a thing to do with you. I gave you what you were meant to have and I gave them what they were meant to have. And the thing about God is that he pays attention to how we handle our benefits. He pays attention to what we do with our benefits. Benefits come with responsibilities. Benefits come with responsibilities. That's what Jesus meant in Luke 12, 48, when he said, to whom much is given, much is required. God requires faithfulness. God requires good stewardship. God requires maturity. And family, we cannot be faithful over what we've been given when all we do is focus on what somebody else has been given. You can't be faithful over your spouse when all you care about is somebody else's. You can't be faithful over your children when all you care about is somebody else's. You can't be faithful over your home, your career, your calling, your life, nothing whatsoever that God has placed in your care. You cannot be faithful if all you focus on is what somebody else got. your own benefits. Next to your mind, your own benefits. Mind your own benefits. Mind your own blessings. You know, just say mind your own benefits. Right there. But as we continue on with our text in Psalms 103, I want to come back to the B clause of verse 9. David says, and forget not all his benefits. 
Now, given the way in which David follows this up with specific examples of these benefits, it's clear that David wanted his audience to be aware of some of the ways in which God continually blesses us. However, given the trajectory of David's life, given the journey that David went on, I challenge us to read a little bit deeper into the text. I submit to you that David challenges us not to forget God's benefits because he realized something very simple. And that is that there are situations in life, y'all hear me, there are situations in life that make it difficult to remember God's benefits. Can we be real up in here? There are things that come up in our lives that make it difficult to remember how good God has been. It doesn't matter how saved we are. It doesn't matter how churchy we are. It doesn't matter how many scriptures we know. There are times in which life starts life in so much that it doesn't look like we're reaping any benefits whatsoever. I entitled this message Perpetual Blessings, meaning that they never end. But there are times in life where it feels like our benefits have expired. There are times when it feels like the policy is no longer in existence. Times when it feels like God has turned away. We hear about this healer. Meanwhile, we're still sick in our bodies. We hear about this provider. Meanwhile still can't pay our bills. We hear about this deliverer. Meanwhile, we're still stuck in our situation. We hear about this God of justice, and yet it looks like our enemies triumph while we continue to suffer and find ourselves asking, Lord, where are you? Where are these benefits that I read about? Why are you taking so long? What are you doing? Where are these perpetual blessings? Only you and God know what those situations are in your life. But whatever the case may be, all of us have had moments where we've had difficulty remembering God's benefits. Right. I'm reminded of what David asked of God earlier in Psalms 13. The same David that said, forget not his benefits, also said in Psalms 13, How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Yes, the same David who said, bless the Lord and forget not his benefits also asked the Lord, how long? How long? What does this mean? It means that two things can sometimes be true at the exact same time. Yes, God is a God of benefits. Yes, God gives us perpetual blessings, but that does not mean that life is not going to happen. That does not mean that trials are not going to come. That does not mean that we won't have to cry sometimes, that we won't experience loss, that we won't experience pain. But one of the benefits of God is that trouble don't last always. It may last a little while, but it ain't going to last forever. You might have to cry for a little while, but you ain't going to cry forever. You might be broke for a little while, but you ain't going to be broke forever. You might be sick for a little while, but you ain't going to be sick forever. And David is reminding us that even in our moments of difficulty, we still have the benefits of God. Not only that, not only that, but let's look again at verse 10 of Psalms 103. Uh -huh. David says that God has not dealt with us according to our sins. Uh-oh. Another translation says, as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our offenses. In other words, one of the ways in which God perpetually blesses us is by extending to us his grace and mercy. Yeah. Those of us in the church are at least familiar with those blessed twins known as grace and mercy. Grace being when God gives us what we don't deserve and mercy being God not giving us what we actually deserve. And family, if we're honest with ourselves, God should have cut us off a long time ago. God should have let us get what was coming to us a long time ago. God should have let us fall on our behinds a long time ago. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank God that he gives gives us chance after chance to do better. Thank God that our faults don't block God from seeing our potential. Yeah, we mess up, 
Yeah, we do wrong, but God looks past all of that and he sees who we are. He sees who we can be. He sees our future and he never throws us away. That's a benefit, y'all. That's a benefit, y'all, because everybody don't do that. There's some people in life, they're just waiting on you to mess up one time so they can throw you away. They're just waiting on you to make one mistake so they can throw you away. But you can make 50 million different mistakes and God still loves you. God still sees you. God still has room for you. God still has a plan for you. That is a blessing. That is a benefit. That's what David means in verse 17 when he says, From everlasting to everlasting, from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is towards those who fear him. In other words, God's faithfulness is endless. God's care for us is endless. We never experience a moment in which our God does not love us. Even when God allows us to reap the consequences of our actions, his love never abandons us. And some Somebody needs to know today there is never a moment where God does not love you. There's never a moment where God does not value you. There's never a moment where God does not see you. There's never a moment where God has forgotten you no matter what is surrounding you right now. God still sees you. I'm reminded of what David said. In the 23rd Psalm, surely, everybody say surely. Surely goodness and mercy. I heard somebody say shelly gully and mercy, but okay. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Wait a second, how many days? How many days? Some of the days? Every other day? All of the days. Notice he didn't say maybe goodness and mercy will follow me. Notice he didn't say, I hope goodness and mercy follows me. No, David emphatically asserts and he says, surely, meaning this I know, this I'm certain, I'm confident of this. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In other words, no matter how bad it looks, his goodness and his mercy is with me everywhere that I go. God's perpetual blessings, God's perpetual favor, God's perpetual Perpetual grace, God's perpetual mercy, God's perpetual attention, God's perpetual care. All of this will follow me all the days of my life. And family, there is never a day where the benefits of God are not with us. We might not always see them. We might not always feel them. But God's benefits kept us back then. And God's benefits are keeping us right now. And God's benefits are going to keep us in the future. That's what the hymn writer meant when they said, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou has been. Thou forever will be pardoned for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to God strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings are mine with 10,000 beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all that I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me can anybody say that God has been faithful can anybody testify that he's been faithful As I prepare to close, I want to talk to somebody today who may be having a difficult time remembering God's benefits. Perhaps life has been so difficult for you that these difficulties have blinded you to how good God has truly been. You probably feel like God has forgotten about you, that God knows how to bless everybody else, but he somehow leaves you out. If that's you today, know that you are not alone. 
You are not alone. You are in good company. Life happens to air last one of us. And I love saying that right there. Air last one of us. Life is going to happen. None of us are exempt. Doesn't matter how much money you got. Doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. Doesn't matter what your last name is. Life will find your address at some point. But I want to encourage you today to hold on. I want to encourage you today, don't lose faith. I want to encourage you today, don't lose heart. I want to encourage you today, don't give up on God. I don't know what mess you're dealing with today. I don't know what mess is surrounding you right now. I don't know what's got you burning down to the point that you can't live your life in peace and joy. But I do know that God is able to fix it. I do know that there is no problem that any of us face that our God is not able to handle. I'm reminded of a quote by my hero and inspiration, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, if you do not have a deep and patient faith in God, you will be powerless to face the delays, disappointments, and vicissitudes that inevitably come. I'm going to say that one more time. If you do not have a deep and patient faith in God, you will be powerless to face the delays, disappointments, and vicissitudes that inevitably come. In other words, setbacks will happen. Not might, will. Disappointments will happen. Trials will come. But if we don't have faith, we have no hope of survival. Life is difficult enough as it is, but living without faith in God only adds to the difficulty. God is the only one. Somebody say the only one. God is the only one that can take us through our trials. God is the only one that can heal our bodies. God is the only one who can pay our bills. God is our only true solution. And I say this as somebody that has been very frustrated with God lately. I'm going to be honest about that. I've been very frustrated because God's ways are never our ways. And that can really get frustrating. But even in my frustration, I realize that God is the only one who can help me. I can't help myself. There's no human that can help me. God is the only one who can help me. And family, the reality is that God is the only one who can help you. However, we first need to call on him. We need to know him for ourselves, and we need to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. So if you're here today and you don't have that personal relationship with him, there is still hope. As long as we are living and breathing, we have a chance to make things right. Family, nobody else can do what God can do. There's no one else that can love us like he loves us. There's no one else that can care for us like he can care for us. There is nobody that you can name that can do what our God can do. That's why that songwriter said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He is my friend. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are seasons in life uh -huh. that make it difficult sometimes to remember God's benefits. Yeah. Well, for me, I'm in that season right now. Fact about it, 2023 as a whole was an example of that. 2023 was the absolute worst year of my life so far. I've had such high hopes for that year, and yet none of them came to pass. Fact about it, the opposite of everything that I prayed for took place. I lost my pastor and my mentor, Dr. R.L. White Jr. I lost another friend and mentor, Dr. Harris T. Travis. I had a very specific dream that didn't materialize. I had to watch my home church descend into chaos following my pastor's death. My family and I struggled financially for several months with seemingly no end in sight. And to top it all off, my mother passed away. So needless to say, I didn't feel like I had very many benefits last year. Yes, I have a beautiful wife and two beautiful children. Yes, we have a roof over our heads and clothes on our backs and food to eat and clothes to drive, uh, uh, cars to drive. Yes, God kept us all in good health. But I don't mind telling you today 
that it's been rough. I don't mind telling you today that sometimes it didn't feel like I had any benefits. I've asked God many times. God many times how much longer I've wondered within myself will this ever get better but one thing I can say is that while I may have lost a lot I haven't lost everything while my heart is heavy and my spirit is weary I know that I'm still blessed I know that God has not left me and I know that this mess won't last forever no matter what comes my way I've got a made up mind that I will yet still praise the Lord is there any Anybody here that's got a yet still praise. I may not know where my bills are going to get paid, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. I not know when my body's going to be healed, but I'm still will praise the Lord. I may not know when I reconcile with family, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. That's why David said earlier in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, I know he perpetually blesses me, but I am going to perpetually bless the Lord. I am going to perpetually magnify the Lord. I am going to lift him up. I am going to praise him and I will never, ever, ever, ever stop praising him. Like that songwriter said, I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. What's his name? Come on and praise him up in here. blessings if you got nothing else but what I said today just know that no matter what is going on in your life no matter what you are facing right now you are still blessed and God's blessings never leave God's benefits never leave think about the benefits at your job they renew every year Sometimes you got to apply for new ones. You got deadlines to worry about. You got all of these stipulations behind it. But guess what? You get God's benefits and you ain't got to do nothing to get them. The fact that he took the time to create you, that was the first benefit. But that also entitled you to continual benefits because God loves you just because you're you. Just because you're you. There's no amount of money that can make him love you more. There's no education that can make him love you more. There's no talent or ability that can make him love you more. God just loves you for who you are. And that's a continual benefit. That's a continual benefit. So even if you're struggling right now, even if you came to church this morning saying, I really don't want to go to church. I really don't want to hear any gospel songs. I'm hurting in my spirit. I'm trying to figure out how to pay my bills. My family's acting a fool. I don't want to deal with all of this. You still have benefits. You still have blessings. You still have something to thank God for. I'll just keep it simple. Ain't nobody in here naked right now, so all of us got clothes. I see a bunch of cars in the parking lot. That means that nobody walked to get here. All of us got food to eat. All of us, or most of us, got mobile devices so we can talk to people. I see some of y'all sitting next to folks. That means you've got family, you've got friends. You have any idea how many lonely people are in this world? We've got benefits, y'all. We've got benefits. God has been good. And I don't want any of us to fall into the trap that the enemy sets, where we focus so much on our issues that we forget how good God has been. He wants you to keep complaining. Somebody hear me. The devil wants you to keep complaining. The devil wants you to get mad at God. The devil wants you to stop praying. The devil wants you to stop reading the Bible. The devil wants you to get impatient and say, well, since God ain't done it, I guess it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to stay down. But you can fight back. You can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And all that's within me, I will praise his holy name because that disarms the enemy. You're sick in your body, but you're still praising him. The devil can't do nothing with that. You can't pay your bills, but you're still praising God. The devil can't do nothing with that. You are depressed in your mind. You're confused in your mind. You don't know what to do, but you've still got the presence of mind to lift up the Lord. That scares the hell out of the devil. We'll say it that way. So if you want to fight the enemy, praise the Lord. If you want to beat the enemy, 
praise the Lord. If you want to come out of your situation, just praise the Lord. If you need lifting, praise the Lord. If you need a blessing, praise the Lord. If you need healing in your body, praise the Lord. And the more you praise him, God will take you higher and higher. God will make you feel better. He will give you strength. He'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around and it's going to work in your favor. Do you believe it today? Do you believe it today? Then come on and praise him in this house. the devil real good. I want y'all to emphatically say he has done great things. He has done great things. Think about what he's done for your life. He has. He has done great things. Make the devil mad. He has done great things. to think of anything he's done for you. He has. to trust me. So come to Jesus today. We will pray with you the prayer of salvation. If you're watching and listening online, type in the comments I want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And somebody will reach out to you and pray with you the prayer of salvation. Will there be one today? We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh my brother. We offer Christ Oh, 
abundantly. softly our second appeal is this you may have given your life to Christ before but you felt yourself slipping away and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus I say this all the time we may stop paying attention to God but he never stops paying attention to us so you can always come back he didn't lock the door behind you you can always come back and he will receive you right back into the ark of safety so walk forward and we will pray with you the prayer of rededication. Type in the comments, I want to rededicate my life and we will pray with you. Will there be one? Hallelujah. Our third appeal is this. You're saved, you're born again, you know you're going to heaven when you die, but you're in need of a church home and you want to unite with this branch of Zion. Pastor Franklin would love to be your pastor. Mount Olivet would love to be your church family as they seek to do God's will together. There's plenty good room here at Mount Olivet. So walk out today. Say, I want to join this body of believers. Type in the comments, say, I want to unite with this fellowship. And they will happily welcome you into this family of Zion. Will there be one? Last, last but not least, if you need prayer, if you're here today and you look over your life, you look over what you've got going on, and you need somebody to take your name before the throne of grace, you're burdened down right now, you're overwhelmed right now, you're confused right now, you're on the verge of giving up and you just need help, the altar is open, family. Come to the altar. We know what God can do over here at Mount Olivet. We know that he's a miracle worker. So bring your burdens to him right now. Bring your issues to him right now. Bring your situation to him right now. We will happily pray with you. If you're watching online, type in the comments, I need prayer. If you want to say what it is, go right ahead. But if anybody wants to give their life to Christ, if anybody wants to rededicate if anybody wants to join Mount Olivet or anybody needs prayer, we are for Christ. God bless you. You may be seated. serve a mighty God. It's almost time for us to leave, amen, but I want to do something real quick, amen, and I need you to help me do it. Reverend Howard preached from the depths of his heart, amen. and I hope that as much as he was encouraging you, that you did not fail to hear what he said. He said 2023 was a hard year for him. 2023, Pastor R.L. White passed. He said that was a blow to him. Then the pastor of Zion church passed. That was another blow to him. There were things that he had hoped to accomplish in 2023 that did not materialize. That was another blow to him. And then when it might seem like the sky, the sky was about to fall in, his mother passed. For most of us, amen, we would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. So what I want us to do real quick, amen, I need you all to help me, amen. Now, Reverend Howard, if you don't mind, we just want to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to just come down, amen, for a second, amen. Amen. Uh, Deacon Johnson, if you would come up, Deacon Rachel, amen. Deacon Estops, if you would come up real quick, amen. Amen. We're going to just pray for, take your time, Deacon Estops. We're going to just pray for Reverend Howard. Deacon Johnson, you come on this side for me, amen. Amen. A lot of times, most times, the preachers pray for everybody else. But who prays for the preachers? Man, from where most people sit, you think that 
the preachers and the pastors life is all easy they never have any problems every day is a sunny day but that's not so amen they, they go through the valleys just like you go through the valleys and while they are pouring from the depths of the heart to bless everybody else when their phones ringing and then and, and, and the, the uh, things are going, the electronics are going off. Who prays for the preachers? And so, amen. Uh, Dick and Elder Reynolds, come, come down here if you can. Amen. I want, I want you to get close. Come right here. Come on. Amen. I just want right where you are. Amen. If you believe in prayer, just to pray for Reverend Howard and his family. Amen. Amen. So let's just pray right now. Amen. And, and, and Dick and uh, Johnson, if you will. Touch him right, digging his dog. Come, come around, come around, amen. We're going to circle you, amen. Amen. Just come around, amen. Amen. Right there, amen. Let's all unite, amen. And all y'all, just bow your head right now. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for being a God like no other. There is none like you, there never has been, there never shall be. You are the one true living God. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ who sacrificed his life on Calvary for each and every one of us, that we might have a heaven in our view and hell in our rear view. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of your children, reminding us of all that Jesus said, all that Jesus did, and all that you call each and every one of us to be. And Father God, now we gather right now around Reverend Howard Sr., Lord, just surrounding him, touching and agreeing with him, Heavenly Father, that the best is still yet to come. Lord, we pray right now that all the attacks of the enemies, every trial and tribulation, every test he had to go through, Heavenly Father, Lord, does not decrease his faith, Lord, but increases his faith in you, Heavenly Father. Lord, that he does remember those perpetual blessings that you have for each and every one of your children, including him, Heavenly Father, that no matter how dark the clouds might seem overhead, Lord, behind every cloud the sun is still shining. Lord, we pray right now, Lord, dear God, that you continue, Lord, to undergird him, Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Heavenly Father. Not just him, but his wife and his children, Heavenly Father, and his family, Lord, and his father. That they might know you still sit high. You ever look low, hear the cries of your children, Heavenly Father. And, Lord, when he's going through that valley moment, Heavenly Father, Lord, help him not to cast his eyes downward, Lord, but help him look, lift his eyes upward, Heavenly Father, unto you. For you said in your word, I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From with cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. Remind him day and night, Heavenly Father. Lord, that you are with him, you never forsaken him, Lord, that you will continue to lead him and, and guide him, Lord. And then when he can't go any further, Lord, you will carry him every step of the way. Lord, elevate him right now. Open doors in front of him, Heavenly Father, Lord. Put all of his enemies behind him, dear God, that he might have a clear view of you, Lord. That your word might continually be in his mouth. That praises might come forth, Lord, and worship might come forth. That he knows that you are his God, that he is your child. That he keep on preaching your word and teaching your word, Heavenly Father, until you call him home. So, Father, right now, lift up your child right now. Lift up Reverend Howard right now, Heavenly Father. Let him know, Lord, you will dry all of his tears, Heavenly Father. Lord, you will restore all of his joy, Heavenly Father. Lord, you will bring him into that green pasture, Heavenly Father, that only you can, dear God. So, Lord, we pray right now as we outstretch our hands on him, Heavenly Father, as we open up our hearts to him, Heavenly Father. Lord, that you will be with him right now and forevermore. Let him know, dear God, deep within his heart, dear God, how much you love him. You love him so much that you gave your only son for him. Bless him right now, dear God. From this moment forward, in the name of your son, who is our Lord, our Savior, our soon returning King, Jesus to Christ. And everyone who agrees with this prayer, say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. All of that truly be heard from on high today about the perpetual blessings of God that in your lonely moments in your moments of sorrow you will remember that even when you're going through God's blessings are still with you no matter how young you are no matter how old you are God has never stepped away from you one day of your life and in spite of what other folks say about you God is still with you, amen. 
I'm going to ask Reverend Howe, he's going to come up and give us a few words in our benediction. But as we always say here at Mount Olivet, this, this message has inspired you, uplifted you, encouraged you, or empowered you. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't be stingy. Don't be a hoarder. No, but share it with somebody else that they too might hear the life-liberating word of God and know about God's perpetual blessings. Come on, let's receive Reverend Howe one more time. Come on. rough. That's another reason why I get on those roller coasters, because at least up there, none of those troubles exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for your love and for your support. And it was a blessing to be with you all again. I pray that the message was a blessing to you. As I say always, if it blessed you, share it with somebody. Those online, like and share it. Tag somebody. And you know my challenge. Find seven people in your phone. Make sure one of them is somebody you don't like. It's more fun that way. And text them today's sermon topic, Perpetual Blessings. That's all you got to send them, just Perpetual Blessings. And put in parentheses, mind your own benefits. Put in parentheses, mind your own benefits. Find seven people, text them that, and then when they hit you back, talk about what are you talking about, that's your opportunity to share the gospel. That's your opportunity to tell them about what we learned in church today. You never know how that one conversation can change somebody's life for the better. But if all hearts and minds are clear, let us all stand. As I believe, we are about to be blessed with our closing song. never to forget your benefits, your blessings, and your love. God, as we prepare to depart from this place and those watching and listening online, prepare to embark upon their day. Please dispatch your ministering angels to encamp around us and keep us in your care, O oh God, until we are blessed to meet again. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and will present you faultless before his throne of grace with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah, hallelujah. thank God, thank God. and amen. amen. We love your family. God bless you.